Gentlemen, what is going on today? My name is Ryan Mickler. I'm the host and the founder of the Order of Man podcast and movement. Welcome here today. Uh, this is your Friday Field Notes. If you're just joining us, the Friday Field Notes is some rambling, some thoughts, some ideas, the things that have been bouncing around in my brain over the past week. Uh, we also have an interview show where we interview guys like Jocko Willink and Andy Frasilla and Tim Kennedy and Tim Tebow and Ben Shapiro and Terry Crews, Matthew McConaughey. Uh, the guys that we've had on the podcast are absolutely incredible. And I've got some really, really good podcasts lined up moving forward. We just had Matt Boudreau on uh, last week to talk about the power of alternative education. So if you're interested in that, make sure you check that out. And as I said, we have some great guests coming up. So make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. Uh, we have also got our Ask Me Anything. I've been uh, unavailable for our Ask Me Anything, which come out on Wednesdays uh, because I've been gone. I've been traveling a little bit with some hunts, which is exactly what I'm going to talk with you about today. Uh, before I get into some lessons that I've learned over the past week and a half of hunting in Hawaii, uh, I do want to share with you that we have exactly one more week of the Iron Council being open for enrollment. That's it. Once we close it down, we're closing it down for three or four months, and we won't open it up again until uh, sometime in the fall. So if you've ever thought about banding with other men, uh, building in some accountability into your life, finding value-driven men, guys like you on the same path as you, maybe different in the way they see things or the way they go about doing it, but all trying to get to the same destination, becoming a more effective father, husband, business owner, community leader, then you want to check out the Iron Council. We operate in 12-man teams called Battle Teams. You're going to get assignments. You're going to get challenges. You're going to be held accountable. You're going to have opportunities to lead, obviously yourself, but other men in the Iron Council. Uh, there's a book of the month that we go through together. Guys are meeting up locally and regionally. So it's an incredible, incredible opportunity to find like-minded men, like-minded men, excuse me, and uh, connect with them in a powerful and meaningful way that'll help improve your life. So again, one more week and that's it. We're closing it down. Don't message me and 10 days and say, hey, I missed it. Can I? No, the answer is no, because we want you to go through with a group who's just getting started and we've got a great system to get you up to speed quickly. So you can check it out at orderaman.com slash iron council, orderaman.com slash iron council. All right, guys. So let's get into my five lessons learned from hunting in Hawaii. Uh, I go to Hawaii every year. I hunt axis deer on the island of Molokai, and then I will usually head over to the big island and we'll do a sheep or a pig or a goat hunt. This time I did a goat hunt with another friend of mine. And so it was an incredible opportunity. It is every year. I love going over there. I love hunting. I love trying to become a more effective, proficient hunter and provider for myself and my family. And this is a big part of my life. So I uh, took that opportunity and I'm coming to you with some lessons learned, some things that went well and some things that you know didn't work out exactly the way that I would have hoped and expected. So the first thing I want to tell you is, guys, you've got to carve out time for yourself. All right. You're so busy and inundated with life and work and projects and chores and parenting and everything else that you have going on that is all noble, right? It's all noble. It's all things that you should be doing. But if you're not carving out time for yourself, you are going to burn up and you're going to burn out and you're going to end up exploding. You're going to end up saying things you don't mean. You're going to make stupid decisions because you're exhausted and you're burned out. And you're just not going to be as effective with the, the factors of life, the, the areas in life in which you operate. So you have to find time for yourself. Now, I'm not saying that you need to take a week and a half every year and go to Hawaii. If that's in the cards or if that's something you want to do, then you, obviously you should consider it. But it might just mean a three or four day weekend. Uh, I did an interview, uh, kind of an Ask Me Anything episode with my wife a couple of weeks ago. And we talked about the importance of taking care of ourselves independently of our spouse and other obligations and responsibilities. So I went to Hawaii with my friends, not with her, not with my family, with my friends. And I spent time there. My wife takes long uh, weekends or four or five days and goes uh, and does a sibling weekend she did months ago, or we'll go visit her family, which she did a couple of weeks ago. These are all things that each of us believe are extremely important, not only for the health and sanity of ourselves, but also so that we can more adequately and fully serve our families and the other obligations and responsibilities that we have. I'm coming back rejuvenated, 
recharged. I got a break. I got to spend time with some friends. I got to do something that I enjoyed. And now I come back into it a little behind, a little stressed, quite honestly, but able to tackle it because I've got the emotional, spiritual self buckets filled up so that I can now more adequately, more fully pull, pour into my family, my friends, my business, et cetera. So communicate with your wife. In fact, I would encourage you today, this week to tell her, hey, hon, we need to take some time for ourselves and get your calendars out and figure out a three or four day weekend that you can go wherever it is you want to go. Maybe you want to go on a hunting trip or a fishing trip, or you want to go do a hike, or you want to go camping. I don't know, whatever your thing is and call up a couple of friends and you guys go do it yourselves and get away from the family for three or four days. And also make sure she gets time for herself on the calendar. Cause I promise you, I promise you, she's going to come back better, more able to serve in her capacities and her roles that she does within the dynamic of your walls. So that's number one is make sure that you're taking care of yourself. Uh, number two is that you have to find and surround yourself with value-driven men, like-minded men, guys that you admire, guys that you respect, men you want to spend more time with, guys who are knocking it out of the park in certain facets of life that you do. If you know a great family man, you should spend time with that guy. If you know a great businessman, you should spend time with that guy. Um, the couple of friends I, I went with are both family men. Uh, they're both extremely, extremely successful in business. Uh, and I didn't go with the anticipation of you know, having them coach me, but at the same time, conversations were had uh, about family and how to be a father and how to be a husband and how to lead our wives and, and how to run a business and how to turn it into uh, greater business opportunities, which will increase income, which increases flexibility and other opportunities that will present themselves. So surround yourself with these guys. And if you put together some sort of a, a weekend or a week-long hunt, what's cool about that, and I've done this countless times, is I'll put together a hunt. I've got that lease in Hawaii. I can bring up to five other men. And this is a beautiful thing. I don't have to do a one-to-one -one type thing because sometimes that's awkward to call a guy and say, hey, can we hang out? It's like a date almost. Instead, I'll say, hey, I've got six of us going to Hawaii or going on this hunt or going on this camp out or going on this trip, or I've got a foursome for golf this Saturday and I need one other guy. And it's a great opportunity to hand select men that you admire, men that you respect, and maybe even somebody you want to get to know a little better or consider inviting into your circle. I get so many questions about how to build your band of brothers and how to find other men. This is how you do it, all right? Nobody else is going to do it, which means that you're going to have to do it yourself, but also it leaves the field wide open. If you're the guy who's putting the thing together, then it's inevitable that you're going to become the go-to guy for these types of events. And you get to cherry pick and hand select who you want to spend time with. And if somebody jives with the group, they keep coming back. If not, no, no worries. You invite somebody else next time. Guys, it's an amazing, amazing way to build a band of brothers, to get to know people, to get mentoring, to get coaching, to even just absorb some of their personality or the way that they show up uh, or the way they handle themselves. And I was inspired by the couple of guys that I was with this past week. And I learned some things about the way that I want to show up for my family and in my business and in my community. And I had some conversations where we didn't necessarily agree. Um, and some of our debates and exchanges got heated, but never any ill will. But these were great conversations that I could have with guys who made me better. You have to find other men. So many guys are going at it alone. And because they are, they're leading inferior lives. If you don't have somebody else there, there's nobody else to bounce ideas off of. There's no new inputs or stimulus into your brain, into your soul, in the way that you're going to show up. Business opportunities. In fact, there's a great business opportunity that presented itself this past week and a half while I was hunting because I was there and I invited the right people and business opportunities present themselves. This is where it happens, guys. So get around other men, invite other men, and you're going to have to do it. They're not going to do it. I promise you. Everybody talks about it and nobody does it. But if you learn to become that guy who puts together the event, 
does the logistics, coordinates it all, pays for it up front. And I'm not saying you have to pay it all because these guys can contribute, but I'm saying you pay for it up front and get these guys to pay you for it. It's the, the, the world is at your fingertips. It just opens itself up and you become invaluable because nobody else, everybody wants it and nobody's going to do it. That's the way that you create opportunities. If people want something and they're not going to do it for themselves and you become that answer, you make yourself powerful, valuable, obsolete. Okay. Or not, obs not, not, I should say not obsolete, meaning you're needed. All right. Uh, number three is you have to manage expectations. So while I was on this hunt, um, it didn't really go according to plan for the first six days of the hunt. And I missed a couple of shots on some axis deer in Hawaii. And I was very frustrated. And um, I've seen other people get very frustrated, not only on this hunt, but other hunts and every, every other part of life. And I can't help but think that the reason that we get so upset with ourselves or with the situation is because we don't have a healthy sense of expectations around what it's going to take to be successful in any venture. So I've been dealing with a, a little minor injury. I'm having surgery this week on it. Uh, and I was very hesitant of shooting my bow leading up to this hunt because I didn't want to put any undue stress or pressure on my injury, which is my uh, a, a pectoral tear. And so I've been very hesitant to do that. Um, so I really haven't been shooting that my bow that much. And I got out there and because I missed several deer, it was pretty evident that I hadn't shot. And that was my fault. I, I missed or messed up on the expectation of what it would take. I thought I could just go up and show up and stick a couple of deer, great clean shots, put food in my freezer, have some stories to share, take a picture, do the thing, right? And it didn't work out like that because my expectations were off. And I've seen a lot of men throw temper tantrums. I've seen a lot of men like completely melt down and blow up. And I've seen so many different things on hunts and other facets of life because the expectations weren't set and they didn't know what it would take. And it didn't pan out the way that they had envisioned. And then their whole world falls apart. It's wild. And I've been there. I've done the same thing. I've thrown that temper tantrum. I've blown up at people around me because I didn't do what I should have done, which in this case was prepare a little better for the hunt uh, and then perform a little better. Right. And, and especially under pressure, you know, you're out there and you have this small target and it's important to you and, and you pride yourself on being somebody who can successfully complete a hunt and then it doesn't work out. And all of those unnecessary burdens and expectations that we place on ourselves just pile on and pile on and pile on. And you might be able to shoulder that weight for a long time because you're strong. You're mentally tough. You're emotionally stable. You're physically strong. And so you can handle it. But then there's one little experience and it just puts that little extra weight on your shoulders and you crumble. So manage the expectations and then whatever the expectations are. And I'll tell you this, the expectation should always be that it's going to be harder than you think it is. Everybody thinks it's going to be easy. Everybody thinks that uh, if they show up and just, and just do it, that they're going to perform. And that's not the case ever. It's going to be harder than you think. You're going to perform less than you're capable of. Be aware of that. And then what you do is you bridge the gap between what the reality of the situation is and where you currently are. And that's what I failed to do. I didn't think about what it would take, or I didn't remember what it would take from last year. And I failed to plan. And then the result was spoke for itself. Now I got dialed in eventually, but it took me longer than it should have if I would have been planning and preparing and managing those expectations. All right, number four, along the same lines. So Again, I was out there for uh, six days hunting axis deer and then two days hunting goats on the big island. And I had missed a couple of shots early on in the week. It was like three for three days or so. And I, I just, I'm a pretty decent shot. I, I practice a lot. I didn't leading up to the event or the hunt, as I told you, because of the, the injury I'm dealing with, didn't want to agitate that and make it worse. Uh, so I was, I was very cautious of that. And I just missed a couple of shots, but I shouldn't have, they were shots I should have made. 
And I couldn't figure out why that was the case. Well, a couple of days later, I decide, okay, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to go shoot my bow, which I know is, sounds ridiculous looking at it now, but for whatever reason, I didn't shoot when I got there. And I realized I shot arrow after arrow after arrow. I shot about seven or eight arrows and they were all low at 50 yards. And I realized that whether my sight got bumped or, you know, something, maybe my peep sight got, got changed. Something happened where my bow was shooting five yards short and surprise, surprise, the couple of deer that I missed, it was under them. It was right under them at their feet, at their knees. I'm like, what is going on? Okay. Well, I made my adjustments and I was able to do better. And the point that I'm making is that guys, we have to check our equipment. All right. If you go into battle or a performance or a job interview or a client presentation, like make sure you check your equipment. There's a great quote, and I can't remember who says it. We are, I'm paraphrasing, we are tool wielding animals. With tools, we are everything. Without them, we are nothing. Right? That's one of the things that really separates us from the rest of the animal kingdom is our ability to fashion tools. I mean, I'm using it right now. I'm using a computer. I'm using a camera. I'm using a microphone. I've got a pen here and I've got paper and I've got notepads and I've got books and I've got this little dashboard here. I've got so many tools around me when I'm a, on a hunt. I've got a, a highly precise bow. I've got machined arrows. I've got broadheads that are supposed to be functioning correctly and the fletching should be working properly and my knock should be accurate. And like, these are all tools that we have to be able to complete a task. And I failed to check my equipment before I went out into the field. And lo and behold, I messed up because I didn't check my equipment properly. Um, I was telling a couple of guys in the Iron Council about this experience. And I said that there's uh, a great movie. A lot of you guys have probably watched it called The Ghost in the Darkness. And Val Kilmer plays, I, I believe, is an engineer tasked with building uh, a bridge across a river in a very harsh part of Africa. And uh, there ends up being, and I don't want to give anyway any spoil. It's old. It's like 30 plus years old, probably, but I don't want to ruin it for you guys if you haven't seen it. It's called The Ghost in the Darkness. But there ends up being a, a lion problem that they need to deal with. So Val Kilmer goes out to hunt this lion. Well, he goes with a professional hunter played by Michael Douglas. And before he goes out, the doctor of the village gives Val Kilmer's character a gun and says, here, use my gun. It's more powerful than yours, and you'll need it when you go out there. So he grabs that gun, he goes out there, and he has an opportunity to kill this lion, and his firearm malfunctions. And uh, he ends up almost being eaten by a lion. That doesn't happen. And Michael Douglas's character afterwards says, what happened? And Val Kilmer said something like, yeah, my, my, my gun didn't work properly. And he asked, has that happened before? And Val said, no, it's, it's so-and-so's gun. And Michael Douglas' character says, you went into battle with an untested weapon and just kind of scolds him and chastises him for doing that. And I couldn't help but have that, that thought ring in my head as I tried to shoot deer and kept missing low because I didn't check my equipment. What's interesting is I do it every time I do a podcast. Right? I get into Zoom like I am right now, and I pull it up, and I do a test of my audio and, and video and make sure it's working correctly. Uh, I have some contingencies built in place to make sure I don't miss any recordings because this is important to me. And if it's important to you, then you're going to check your equipment, your rifle, your bow, your computer, uh, whatever presentation material you use when you're on a client appointment, your technology. You're going to check all of that to make sure that when it's time to perform, and that window is small. Like you have a very small window, whether it's hunting or performing or presenting for a client, that window of performance is small and you only get one shot. So you better make sure you're ready. You better make sure your expectations are, are, are clear. You better make sure you've trained properly and you better make sure your equipment is working correctly. All right, that's number four. And then the last one, guys, is persistence. You know, I, I was very frustrated it wasn't working out the way that I wanted to. I had opportunities. I missed opportunities. Very, very frustrating. Um, but I didn't get down on myself. You know, I, I have done that in the past. I just chalked it up to a failure, closed the chapter on, on, on that, you know, section of the hunt, and then went back out the next day. 
and the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day. And so I was gone for, I think, nine days. And on the eighth day, yeah, seven, yeah, well, uh, yeah, it was the eighth day. On the eighth day, uh, me and a buddy of mine, Rick Trimmer, went out and we were on the Big Island uh, now hunting goats. I didn't get my axis deer, unfortunately, because of all the mess ups I just told you. And so we, we, we go out and I've got a friend on the big Island who couldn't go with us, but he gave us access to a piece of property that we could hunt lots of goats over there. So we, we get in, we pull in and we walk for probably 10 minutes and there's a little knoll that we come up to. And when we both thought, well, let's go stand on that knoll. We'll sit up here. We'll glass. We'll try to try to find these goats and then we'll, we'll cut them off and, and hopefully we can make a shot. Well, we get to this knoll and my buddy's up front and he's very tall. He's six, four or six, five. And he saw the goats right over the hill. He's like, oh, there they are right there. And so we both hunker down and I come around the other side of the hill and the goats spot us and they kind of freeze. And I drew back my bow and they kind of start to take off a little bit and one's moving and it was about 20 yards and I smoke this thing. And I was so grateful. It happened within 20 minutes of our hunt on, on, the, on the goats. And I was so grateful that I didn't get pissed at myself, that I didn't throw in the towel, that I didn't break my equipment, which I've done like in golf, you know, you make a bad shot and you throw your club or you bash it on the ground and you break your equipment or you just get down on yourself or you put too much pressure on yourself and you dwell on past mistakes that you can't perform when another opportunity presents itself. And guys, it will. Okay. We're all going to miss shots in life, whether you miss the the promotion, or you miss the girl, or you miss that, or you miss this, whatever. Chalk it up, learn from it, and then get your butt back in the game so that when another opportunity like this did presents itself, you can capitalize. So that happened on day eight. And then my buddy ended up shooting, Rick ended up shooting a goat um, a little later, maybe an hour or two later after I did, we, we got into him again. Uh, and then the next day we went back out and I'm sitting on this hill and they're supposed to come into the ravine. That's what they did the day before. But this time I heard them behind me, the goats behind me. And so I slowly make my way up over this hill and they spot me. All the goats spot me. I'm like, man, I was really trying to go after a billy goat this time. Well, they spot me. So I kind of hunker down and I sit still for about 10 minutes. What well, it seemed like a lot longer, maybe it was even shorter. Anyways, they finally start to bed down and I slink down this hill and I get behind uh, probably a 20 or 30 foot vertical wall where they can't see me. And I slowly make my way over there and I make my way to the end where they're coming and they didn't see me and they start walking and I measure it. It's 75 yards, which is not a guaranteed shot for me. <laughs> 20 yards is not a guaranteed shot for me or anybody really anything could go wrong. And one of the nannies starts to cross at 75 yards, another one. I'm like, okay, well, here comes the billy goat. I kind of peeked around the corner and I saw him where he would come and I'd have a clear shot. So I draw, draw my bow back. He goes right where I, right where I ranged. I knew it was 75 yards. I was about to take my shot and a nanny walks in front. So I stop, she runs by and I make this shot at 75 yards, smoked him. And, you know, he runs off. We ended up having to put another arrow into him to, to kill him. But, um, you know, it worked out, right? That second, that second goat. And I got my billy goat, which is something I've been trying to do for a couple of years now, two, two or three years now. And again, you know, two, two shots right there, one the day before, one the day after. And we made it happen. It started to come together. Persistence, guys, is the key. You know, you can miss shot after shot, after shot, after shot. And then you start to believe that you suck at something, right? If you always miss the promotion or the client doesn't sign up with you and that happens over and over and over again, it's so easy to get discouraged and get down on yourself that you will actually start to sabotage yourself when new opportunities present. Don't allow that to happen. Don't allow that past stuff to sit and dwell and fester inside of your brain. Just let it go. Close the chapter. Figure out what you need to learn and then move on to the next chapter and write a new chapter of your life. But you have to be persistent. You have to be willing to let some of those failures and those mistakes go. 
And you have to be looking for new opportunities, not with 100% confidence, because how could you, but sure that you can perform when the task requires it. So those are my lessons, guys. Lots more, lots more stories and everything else. But these are five things that I pulled away from, from, the, uh, from the hunt. Had a great time. Uh, successful last two days. Unsuccessful first six days. Um, but I'm going back out next year and I'm going to make it happen next year. That's my goal. And if it doesn't, I'm going to learn something else. But ultimately, guys, it's about spending time with people you, you care about. It's about getting yourself around good people. It's about filling your cup so you can more adequately fill into others. It's about being persistent, um, you know, checking your equipment, making sure that you're managing expectations, all the things I shared with you today. I hope that helps, guys. Please let me know what you think. Uh, share this, take a screenshot, share this on Instagram. Um, yeah, just let people know what, what you think, what your lessons are, what you've learned through hunting or other, other facets of life, because that's what the Order of Man is all about. We're all here to serve and help and uplift each other. And that's requiring me to share this information and also requires you to share as you have these lessons and struggles and victories and setbacks and all sorts of stuff in between. So guys, remember as we part, if you want to band with other men and you want to find other men, speaking of which, if you wanted to go on a hunt with other guys, there's guys in the Iron Council. If you want to learn about entrepreneurship, there's highly, highly successful entrepreneurs. Uh, if you want to learn how to get fit, uh, you can you can join the health and fitness channel. There's plenty of train, personal trainers, coaches, nutritionists. Uh, if you want to learn taxes, if you want to learn photography, if you want to learn how to hunt or shoot a firearm, or you just need more accountability in your life, we've already built the system. It's the frameworks. It's the network. It's the system you need to thrive and win. Orderaman.com slash Iron Council. It's only open for another week. So don't sleep on it. Orderaman.com slash Iron Council. All right, guys, we'll be back for our interview with the one and only Andy Frisilla next week. Until then, go out there, take action, and become the man you are meant to be.